Welcome to Coffee and Connections with the Library Director. I'm Cindy Scott, and today I have with me two of the people who work at the library. Um, one of the things that they do is order the materials for the adult collection. They also do book discussions, and they get materials ready to go into the collection, as well as work on the circulation desk. There's also lots of other things that we all do, because <laughs> we're, we definitely multitask. So this is Helen Gallagher and Lynn Clough. So we're going to talk about books a little bit today, and I'm going to start uh, by talking about uh, our cookbook collection here at the library. Traditionally, we had a wide range of cookbooks um, from all over the world, from very um, important cookbooks like Julia Child's cookbook, down to specialty things that would come and go and people would come in looking for recipes. But now that the internet makes it so easy to look up recipes, we're finding that people are using cookbooks more as you would a magazine. They're sitting down and browsing through the cookbooks. So new cookbooks are what are most popular, as well as some of the specialty cookbooks that people focus on when they have a health condition or they're just particularly interested in a type of food like being uh, uh, eating vegan. So I wanted to just talk about some of these kinds of book, cookbooks that we have now that are popular. So some of the things are like specialty cookbooks, like we have a pressure cooking cookbook. Sometimes people who are interested in learning more about doing special kinds of techniques, they'll watch a video on YouTube, but they might look for some recipes and some other tips in the book that we have at the library. Or this one is retro recipes from the 50s and 60s. If you remember something like that green bean casserole that your mother used to make, you can find those kinds of recipes in a cookbook like this. Other people like to learn about different kinds of ice cream. So we have a book called No Churn Ice Cream that has been very popular for people who like to create desserts. But we also have a lot of people who are interested in eating healthy. So a book like uh, Salads for All Occasions has been very popular. Also, we have a number of books on eating meatless that are popular. And there's things like different health conditions, like if you're gluten intolerant, the Wheat Belly cookbook has been very popular for people who are exploring a wheat-free diet. And then there's popular people from TV, uh, Joanna Gaines, Magnolia Table. So cookbooks like this are also very popular and again, I, as I said before, people just like to really browse through them, look at the pictures, get different ideas. So that's the way cookbooks are now being used at the library. And when we order cookbooks, we're um, particularly looking for ones that have a lot of pictures. Because people, that's, that's one thing they want. They don't want the ones from yesteryear that are just lots and lots of text. Right, that's the, it, the text, the, the materials that are mostly text now hardly ever circulate. Uh, it's really the, the pictures and the enjoyment of food that I think people are looking for. Right. I, I think one other thing, people are looking for fairly easy recipes, kind of quick. Julia Child is wonderful if you have all day to prepare something, but if you're looking for something 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but still great ingredients, that's what seems to be the trend right now and people really enjoy that. We have quite a few cookbooks that are for busy moms, and that's in the title, or uh, weekday night quick meals right. and those again are very popular. So I was going to discuss three British authors, uh, crime writers, who are very popular and who are award-winning writers. So you may even be familiar with them. My first one is Anne Cleves, then I was going to discuss Ellie Griffiths, and then Nikki French. So starting with Anne Cleves, Anne Cleves you might even realize that her characters uh, are on television. So she writes two, uh, about two different characters. One is Jimmy Perez, and that's the Shetland series, and the other is Vera, and that is the DCI Vera Stanhope. Both are police, both are a little bit damaged or unusual or, you know, characters that have flaws, which I think is, always makes an interesting read um, for main characters. Anne Cleves also is very proud of the fact that she has written 30 books in 30 years. So she apparently in her mind can go between Shetland and Vera, go back and forth with Jimmy Perez, different character, different voice, different perspective. Um, the other 
character, uh, excuse me, author that I think is very interesting is Ellie Griffiths. So Ellie Griffiths writes, her main character is Ruth Galloway, and she's an archaeologist, and she is uh, one person who always gets involved in some type of archaeological dig that has some mysterious elements to it, and she usually kind of falls into a murder or falls into solving the murder. The, uh, one thing I found interesting about Ellie Griffiths is that she also writes under the name of Dominica de Rosa, and she has a few books on Dominica de Rosa. They're all, they all have Italian settings, so if you like the idea of Italian, a little bit lighter, a little bit you know, more of that Mediterranean feel, that's interesting. Um, Ellie also writes the Stevens and Mephisto uh, books, and that is, uh, those are, uh, 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 Stevens is uh, an inspector, and Mephisto is a magician, and how they go about um, solving crimes. My third author is Nikki French, and actually Nikki French is two people. It's a husband and wife team, and they write, um, mysteries, and their main character is Frida Klein, who is a psychologist, psychiatrist, and she also aids the police in solving mysteries. The thing that I think is interesting about the, the books that this husband and wife write is that they are fairly quick, like this book came out in January, and then she also has one that came out in June. So some of the authors come out quickly with new stories. A year used to be kind of like what everybody did. Some people are now writing a little bit more quickly, and the and the books are coming out because they're such they're so popular. Well, you don't have to wait as long. They, and and people are waiting. With, they always want to know people, when the next one. Yeah, yes. they're very yes. eager to get the the next the next book. Um, may I comment on a couple of your oh, mysteries? Oh, sure. um, I lead the mystery book discussion at the library, and when we did a book by Ann Cleese, I haven't read Nikki French, but would like to. But uh, we did a book by Ann Cleves, and we did another one by Ellie Griffiths. And once we did those, all the members of the book group wanted to take out the other books. Um, so there was a big waiting list to get them, that they enjoyed them Which a lot. Great, yeah. The other thing, too, is they, if you like Louise Penny, you know, she is a Canadian writer, but she has that same, it's the same feel, um, you know, that kind of modern-day um, British crime-solving bent to the, the, the works. So a lot of people seem to like that. Our population here really likes the British writers. I think a lot of the staff actually like yeah. the British <laughs> authors too because I've read two of those and, right. and I really enjoyed particularly the Ellie Griffiths book that I read. So definitely recommend. Yes, yeah. Um, and speaking of mysteries, um, our next mystery book discussion um, at the library is in, in September and it's one of the classic um, the classic authors uh, from England, Daphne du Maurier. Uh, we're going to do Rebecca as a book discussion, and we're also going to show the film on September 21st, the Hitchcock film that is a classic as well. So um, anyway, um, I wanted to recommend that people probably revisit Daphne du Maurier, and take, we have a number of her books here, and what we don't have, we can get from another library. Um, she, reading her actually becomes quite compulsive once you um, start. Uh, Jamaica Inn, um, that was a terrific book with a terrifying uncle and pirates, and it's very creepy and atmospheric. Um, my cousin Rachel, um, both, a lot of her books have been made into films, a uh, few by Hitchcock. Um, this one was remade recently as another film, um, and the question is, is Rachel, her husband's victim, or his murderer. Um, and it's a really naughty thriller. Um, naughty as in twisty. <laughs> and um, House on the Strand is another great one. That was one of her later ones that involved time travel, tra time travel um, to the 1400s. And um, it's pretty haunting. And then again, her short stories, uh, which we have here, are, are great. Um, she wrote one called Don't Look Now that was made into an absolutely terrifying movie with um, uh, Donald Sutherland and Julie Christie. And of course, The Birds, which was a Hitchcock film, was a great short story as well. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm promoting Daphne du Maurier this month. I think it, it would be 
good for people to read some of these classes. Certainly she was an extremely popular author during her lifetime. Yeah. But some of these classics tend to be forgotten and people don't realize how good they are and how well they stand up the test of time. Yeah. Okay. And I think that she, well, she followed that classic of Agatha Christie, she had her own twist. Right. You know, and um, we also have several books by that have been re released by the British Library that are um, classics, whodunits, that they called them in the 30s and 40s. And hers, though, I think are just almost to another level. You know, she develops her characters a little bit more. There's always an unknown, um, which I think is a nice surprise. She, so, uh, yeah, she's a, she's really a master at building suspense. She is. Well, uh, all of the library staff read, and we have a lot of suggestions in, in each of the genres that we enjoy. If you have some questions about who writes things like somebody else, one of the things we have is an online resource we can check, as well as our own experience reading. Everybody gets to know what other people enjoy, and we, we know to refer to a certain other staff member if somebody's looking for a particular type of material. So make sure you come in and ask us for help if you're looking for more things to read in uh, one of the genres that you enjoy. So in September, a lot is happening at the library. Basically, we're going to be having our groundbreaking in mid-September. So it's either coming up or it has already happened by the time you're viewing this. We have gotten a schedule for everything that's going to be happening on the library project, the library expansion and renovation project we've been talking about. It's a very aggressive schedule to have the work start in September, on September 19th, and end in uh, September 2019. So uh, there'll be a lot of things going on, a lot of changes at the library, some disruptions as we go through some of the work that has to be done. If you give us your email, we'll give you updates. We'll also be doing Facebook updates, and we have a blog on our, our online catalog and uh, a website that you can also take a, a look at. Uh, feel free to call uh, and ask us about different things, and I'm happy to answer any questions about the project at any time. Uh, some of the programming that we've been doing is will begin to be reduced as we get toward the latter part of the fall. We will still be doing children's story times. That will continue. But some of the other kinds of programs, uh, the special programs that we've been doing, will either be moving a few of them off-site or we won't have them as we get into November and December. So keep track of what's going on by checking in with us, and we'll keep you informed as we move forward and we learn more about all of the details. But keep posted for lots of change and excitement at the library.